good day folks this is greg judy green pastures farm today i want to talk a little bit why sheep why would anybody want to run sheep i mean i don't know why anybody would want to run sheep <laughs> i never had any inclination to run sheep when i was younger and what a goofy person i was i missed out on a lot of years of making substantial profit on our farm but not having sheep. Did you all know that there was more farms back up? There was more ranches in the American West that were paid for. Clear as a barrel, they, they were paid for by running sheep. And the stories that go along with it are the sons Went off to college, came back, and said, I'm not going to be a sheep farmer. I'm going to be a rancher. And I'm going to run cattle. And so they sold the sheep, brought in cattle on some of these really deserty, dry, arid ranches. And they lost the ranch. They lost the ranch with cattle. Folks, sheep are just tougher animals. If you put cattle in there first of all they get acorn poisoning they be eating all these acorns the sheep are the sheep it doesn't bother them a bit um and all these all this browse in here the cattle will t they'll eat the tips of it but they're not going to get down and just strip it i promise you if you put a time lapse camera on this right here this autumn olive tree right there they're only going to be in this paddock for one day I promise you, every leaf on that tree is going to be gone. That autumn olive is going to be hurting. So what we're going to do, we've got some giant autumn olives out here that are just getting unruly. And so what we're going to do is we're going to cut them. And we're going to give them an autumn olive tree a day. We're in a drought here, folks. Bad drought. And uh, I'm going to give them one of the big autumn olives out there. We're just going to cut it. And that autumn olive is going to get so mad, it's going to come screaming back with all these tender shoots. That's more sheep feed. That's what that is. That's more sheep feed. That's going to be an experiment. The autumn olives, if you let them go, they, they will take your farm. And you will have an autumn olive farm. That's what you'll have. This is a, you know, back to the sheep thing. The sheep are just a smaller animal. They're really good uh, selections for small farms. And, uh, talk to the boys a minute here. We went and uh, put an extra wire on there for the. I was wondering, for, yep. Lamps we bought. Yep. See how they see how they do with that. Yep. They're looking healthy, aren't they? They are. Man, they're cleaning up the acorns in here. Yeah. I was just making the comment that if you turn cattle in here and they really started tanking up on the acorns, especially the young calves, you can get acorn poisoning. Yeah. Oh yep. And I've never poisoned a sheep that I know of. So their guts are different. Yeah. Don't worry about it. I just saw them there going after the uh, common ragweed seed heads. Were they? Just <laughs> Get a little extra protein. Of course, later today we're going to come in and cut a bunch of these autumn olives down for them. Yeah. Boy, I bet they have a heyday on them. Yeah, those tops, like you were saying. Yeah. I can't wait to do that. <laughs> it's going to be like giving them a great big candy bar. Yeah. Extra feed, too. And since we're in a drought, we yep. can use some more. Yep. More feed. What do you all think about the expression people say that sheep are just too much work? That's why they got rid of them. There's too much work. They're as much work as you make them. <laughs> you can make them to be a low maintenance flock if you manage and cull accordingly. And what else do you need to do to have a low maintenance flock? Uh, you gotta have the right genetics, but then you also just have to have it set up right, your farm, as far as your moves and get them broke to a single wire. Yep. That, that saves a lot, of course. We just set up two, but yeah. we're breaking in the process of breaking some, some new ones. Some new ones, yep. 
and on the genetic things in your herd, herd colon, getting them where they're not wormy. You know, right. You got a not batch wormy, that's not wormy, and so you, you don't, don't have, have to feed them grain. Yep. You're saying we don't worm our sheep? Nope. nope. Won't they all die? Nope. <laughs> not, not if you're moving them. It's all tied together. It's a big system so that works. What, what's so big, what's the big deal about moving them all the time, guys? I mean, are you afraid that you're going to get parasites if you don't? Mm -hmm. They're going to make a campsite so right up here is their campsite they're gonna stay up here yep. at the night and if you keep them and you don't back fence them and you leave them on this farm for more than let's say a week they're gonna be really re reinfesting themselves with parasites bedding down their own manure and all that and it's just so by moving them more frequently they just don't have that option yeah they're always on clean ground and keeping that back fence so that they can't get back to the same site is super critical right but man the nice thing about sheep, they lamb in three weeks and then you don't have to deal with it. Sheep are so nice to... Oh, man. I love leave them, them alone. It's so leave easy. Leave them alone. Yeah. Don't, don't even go in there. Yep, get out yeah. of there. Well, won't they the all die if you don't go in there and take care of them? The rest of the year, <laughs> you don't hardly do any work. And these, these ewe lambs that were born this year are almost the size of the ewes already. It's crazy. Yeah. Well, it probably helps that they were eating or waiting persimmons over there. Yeah, that James. probably helps. Yeah, tell us, <laughs> tell us a little bit about the persimmon experience. So what happened when you turned them in there? Well, we were uh, every paddock shift we take them on, we've got a couple of persimmon trees that are en route to the next paddock. You know, so they've got their little sheep trail, so to speak, on the way to the next paddock. And they're just veering off the sheep trail left and right, turning their heads like, oh, there's a persimmon tree. The whole herd veers off, munch, 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 eats all the ones on the ground. Get back in line, another 10 or 20 yards, another persimmon tree, then they all veer off again and go clean it up like vacuum. Same it's, way with the oak trees. They, yeah. They just it's almost like in. giving them a dessert. Oh, yeah. On the way, yeah. I should have taken a picture when we and Jan moved them this weekend. There's that big oak tree up on the center of that ridge. Oh, yeah. The dead one. Yep. I still had some live and the whole flock was right there around that oak tree <laughs> munching on it it was crazy as as well we that that wind. tree you're talking about isaac that is a, a white oak white oak and it's a uh, an old wolf tree. they call them wolf trees yep mm -hmm. and white oak has the sweetest acorns of any of any of the oaks there she's going after this common ragweed seed head see that oh yeah sure enough she's stripping them wow of course then she's grazing up high she's not Eating down There's low. another one over there. Look at that. Yeah, they're cleaning they're them like grain. Yep. Wow. Stripping it down. Because we've been so dry too, they're almost desiccated too now. Probably a little sweeter. Yeah. Look oh, at that. Of excess moisture like, out of them. It probably is like dried down corn or yeah. something. Well, there's no way a cow would have ate a dried up common ragweed seed head. No. Nope. Those sheep are eating them like candy. Yep. Wow. And they look this good and they're not on grain at all. Yeah. They've never had a bite of grain in their life. Or anything. Yep. Except for acorns. Acorns. For salmon. Yeah. yeah. See, that ewe's just going one to the next. Yeah. That must taste pretty good right now. You know, it's got probably pretty good energy in it. There's the ewe over there going after a honey locust tree. Oh, yeah. Behind sure it. enough. Yep. And the cattle were just here. Yeah, about a week ago. About a week ago. The cattle got a lot of the grasses and the forbs, like the clovers and stuff. And sheep are coming in and cleaning up the weeds. We're not pressuring them, we're letting them, but well, we're tightening them down a little bit, but we're moving them sink every day. So mm -hmm. they're eating the weeds down. Right. And then they're, we're leaving so they don't have to stay back. We won't let one of them grazing the grass down too far this time of year. But they're not going after the grass, they're going after the weeds. Or well, the wheat, what we would call weeds. Right. For them, it's well, you know, guys, before those uh, ragweed put on that seed head, they weren't eating them that good. Not no. the common. Now, the giant ragweed they were. Yeah. But now it's got seed heads on. It's like feeding them candy. No. Oh, they're just, yeah, they're going after those first. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. Yep. One, one to the next. They're not even eating the grass. They're just going after Here this. Here they come, coming at back towards the <laughs> Like, we're going to go back down this hill. Yep, there they go. I followed them up through the woods, and all you can hear is crackle, 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 crackle. <laughs> yep. Folks, that, that's a beautiful pond down there. I couldn't believe how it hasn't dropped. It's only down about 10 that's inches. That's another thing about sheep that's awesome is you don't have to fence off the pond. Don't have to fence off the pond. That's right. It's so nice. Because why? They're not going to go in the water. They hate it, don't they? They hate the water. They go to the edge, and then they, they'll never swim. Yep. Not even when it's hot. 
So I, I, the title of my video today is Why Would a Person Want Sheep? Yep. I've just heard a bunch of reasons why you'd want sheep. Mm -hmm. Well, and starting out as a beginner grazer, you don't have as much cost in it per sheep. They uh, reproduce quicker, so your cash flow tur turnaround is real quick. And then when you're moving them, they're not going to kill you. They can't, you know, they're not really going <laughs> to kill you like a cattle could, a cow could. Yeah, if, if you don't know what you're doing, even kids. It may hurt yep. you, but they're not going to kill you. Right. So. And the forage quality too for sheep between sheep and cattle. A lot of these people who are starting out farms, you know, you're not going to get on a place that has pristine cattle pasture. Mm -hmm. You might come in and have one that's got way more broadleaves and undesirables or weeds, if you want to call them that. But that's what they live, they thrive on. Mm -hmm. So I mean, it's it's like a perfect pairing to jumpstart at least the beginning to get your you know kind of a pasture improvement mm -hmm. so, so what would you what would you two say to somebody that's just got an old farm and you know they're thinking what, what what's the best animal to put on it in a small acre just say it's five acres maybe ten and oh we want to we want to run cattle on that what, what would you also tell them you can run a whole lot more sheep than cattle yeah. on that then you know five acres maybe you could run two cows with sheep you could probably get away with close to 10 sheep maybe you know yeah if you get your grass well our common rule is uh, five sheep yeah, five right. used to every cow so if you run two cows absolutely you can run 10. Yep. and what if one of those sheep die you're not out of cow. <laughs> a lot less risk a lot less money yeah a heck of a lot loss heck of a lot less of a loss than a whole cow going down yeah, yeah. you got to get the right genetics too yep or work yourself up to that those genetics yeah you can't just go to the sale barn and buy sheep and expect them to you're going to lose a lot more uh, right because you lost a lot in the beginning i did man did we lose a lot of sheep but now we don't anymore not really losing sheep mm -mm. every once in a while there'll be one that gets yeah i mean you don't get it treated or whatever, whatever. yeah you're, you're gonna have one mm -hmm. uh i don't care how where you at what kind of sheep you have there's just going to be one that falls out every now and then. That's nature. Nature takes them out. Mm -hmm. So, same thing with deer. When deer get old or wormy in nature, mm -hmm. they get caught by a coyote or something. Mm -hmm. I can't believe how fat these sheep know, are. Look at that. I mean, that you, that you right there just fat. Yep. All of them are. They took a lot of their lambs off, or their lamb, they wean their lambs off themselves because the they got big enough and yep. started putting weight on. We're in a drought and they're just fat as mm -hmm. ticks. Mm -hmm. We like that. And in the winter time, you don't have to feed them hay. They can graze stockpile if you've got green stockpile. Well, what about when it gets really cold and you got to provide water to them? What, what about that? You don't really need to. You don't, what do you mean you don't have to provide have, water? They have stockpile to graze. They get all they need from them. They won't drink it. They, they won't drink the water. Mm -hmm. I wonder if they eat on snow, too, probably a little bit. I would say they would. Yeah. Folks, as long as you're moving your sheep on stockpile forage, they won't drink water. But if you put them up in a crowd and feed them hay, you better get some water to them. Yeah. They're such neat animals. Yeah. They're just very low maintenance. Well, folks, I'm going to end that right here. We're going to putting in some more paddocks this morning and on the way out if y'all hit that subscribe button that'd be awesome and uh, we'll see y'all down the road